Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today, it's gonna be an extra special Brood War Remastered. It's gonna be a Professional Cheese number seven. A lot of these are from Caster Muse's Star League Season 3. Thank you very much for RJB supplying me with the replays. And game number one is gonna be here on Match Point. Bottom left, we have a Blue Zerg player. It is Soxery. And in the top right, it's Mighty who is a Red Protoss player and an AC or ASL player as well. So very, very excellent, kind of newer and up and coming players in the StarCraft scene. Some of them are, but they're very good at the game. They are the next generation of StarCraft and they are incredibly, incredibly skilled. They've been playing Brood War since they was babies, man. And it shows. All right, man. So who's going to be cheesing here today? I do want to give a super, super special huge shout out to Nibbler for going through the cheese today and screening the very best ones. I sent him probably 50 or 60 replays and he narrowed it down to about eight of the best cheese options. Some of them I sent him were not actually cheese, so I'm sorry for that, Nibbler. All I can really do is look at the short replays and hope that they're cheese and send them to you and then you can decide if they are or not. Anyway, who's cheesing here today? No cannon rush in the future, it seems like. I don't see a pool first from Soxer either, so like... I'm assuming the hatch firsting Zerg player is not the one who's cheesing in game numero uno. Hit that like button, by the way. Hit that subscribe. I'm here five times a week with StarCraft Brood War Remastered content. You don't want to miss it, man. If you like StarCraft, this is the place to be. If you search Brood War on YouTube, my channel's the one. Did you just Nexus first? What the heck cheese is this? All right, we'll see what we get here. Something about this has got to be cheesy. It caught Nibbler's eye, but it's a Nexus first from Mighty on a two-player map. I mean, it's a it's a hatch first from Soxery, so he's fairly safe to do it, but he didn't know that. He's only just now scouting. What is going on? This game, the aggressiveness, the macro aggressiveness is maybe cheesy enough. Dude, Nexus first is so cool. Oh, that's not a wall either. Uh, okay, so Soxery says, hmm, you went Nexus first. Interesting. I guess, well, my pool's not done. I can't really do anything about it. Maybe I could, like, worker rush you and try to beat you that way, but there's a cannon that's got to be started, like, now. Oh, gateway instead. Okay. Once again, he knows it was a hatch first, so he doesn't, he doesn't need a cannon. Who am I to tell him to get a cannon? Honestly, that pool is still not done. That's how hatch first this was. Oh boy. So Soxery can either attempt to go for a third base and try to out macro the macro player here. Or, oh there it is. Okay, so he goes for the third base to try to out macro the macro player. We'll see how that works out for him, I suppose. <laughs> and one cannon. One cannon, because how many lings are popping out of these eggs? Honestly, a set. There's a set of Zerglings right now. And atmospheric music falls over. All right. So, hmm. I feel like it's got to be Protoss at this stage, right? Cybernetics core coming in. Maybe it's like crazy Arbiter Rush. There's your layer timing from Soxry here as well. Get him. Get the probe. Too smart. It's too smart for that. Metabolic boost on the way. So we're not skipping metabolic boost. Intriguing. Not skipping metabolic boost to go for a, a lair. Went for a lair and then got metabolic boost. But sometimes you don't get the speed at all. You're really trying to save every bit of gas you can to go for the spire and go for the scourge. And maybe the mutalisks, if that's what you're planning on here. What is the plan? Who has plans? Stargate, Mighty's doing pretty darn standard stuff. Stargate, second gas, Overlord comes in for the scout. I'm kind of back on the side of Soxery doing the crazy thing in this game. Feeling like maybe he's our guy. Third base is up. He just tossed down a Spire though. All right. So Spire coming in. Zealot cruising across the map, trying to see what's what. Handful of Zerglings. Also cruising across the map, trying to see what's what. The answer is, well, there's a Zealot and a Zergling out in the middle of the map. Second Zealot here, too. 
Another Zealot on the way. Going for air weapons, attack level one. Going for ground weapons, attack level one. I mean, there's no way these links... Oh! No, 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 no! Okay! Oh, he knew. He knew this was open because, remember, the drone went through there earlier. So you got Lings inside your base, and these aren't Jadong Zerglings, but Soxer is a pretty excellent Zerg player with 500 APM, so, like, his control's gonna be pretty darn good. Let's see what he can do with these Lings by way of killing probes. Oh, wow, losing one Ling before any probes die is not a great start. He ends up scouting the Citadel of a Dune with his Lings, which are still just kind of sharking around. But they've got speed, so the Zealot will never, ever catch them if they do their best at not holding still or, you know, running directly into the zealot which is something you want to avoid if you can at all okay probe down probe down on the other side corsairs kind of just getting free shots off on nothing mind you because the overlords are not in the obvious locations where they would be he's got them off hidden off across the map there's one here there's one here there's one here there's one here but now the scourge are popping so like boo Boo, indeed. All right, cannon coming up in the neural line. Ling still sharking around here. He's got two kills. He's going to die here, though. Yeah, definitely dead there. Does the Zealot have a kill? No. Okay, as long as the Zealots aren't killing these Lings, I'm feeling okay about it. Probes are better better options that way. Pneumatized Carapace coming in. May, I'm feeling maybe drops in the future, or maybe he's just trying to keep his overlords out of harm's way as much as zergly possible when there are Corsairs flying about. Scourge doing good scouting. A lot of zealots up. Temple Archives coming in. This could be kind of a delayed DT Corsair style play too. We're basically, yeah, he didn't open DTs. And at this, you know, these this tech path, he could go for Storm. Maybe just get some Archons in the mix here. Archon sell it would be pretty good. Ow, Scourge gets one connection up on that Corsair, but he's fine. Takes two Scourge to take him down if he's at full health. DTs. I'm rooting for DTs now. This has been a roller coaster. It's been an absolute roller coaster of a play from both these players. I'm trying to figure out who's the one. And this is my final hope right here. This is my final... Oh, it's Storm. And a DT! Hey! Por que no los dos? Says Mighty. I'm gonna get a DT. And I'm gonna get Storm. And these Lings are still continuing to run through... Not unopposed. Not unopposed, mind you. Of course, they're still hunting overlords. A couple Hydras out. Try to deal with this. Ooh! And then the Hydra... Whoa! The Hydras are making their move, bringing Overlords along too, preparing for the potential inevitability. Oh gosh, 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 oh gosh. Gets out of there with 7 HP. An almost dead Corsair. So Sakshri says, all right, time to go. Hydra timing, get here before storm happens. Let's make it happen, Captain. Zealots. Usually pretty good, but man, they're outnumbered like three to one here. It seems like this is a lot of hydralists. More cannons defend the homeland. Beautiful concave setting up. Cannon down, cannon down. The probes in here to fight. If at all possible. Ugh, probes trying to do what they can. Big hydra ball, really problematic. Hydra is bouncing around the backside. I think that's a dead mighty, unless. Corsairs are up. There was a storm here, apparently. But these High Temple are not going to be enough. Overlord's getting absolutely brutalized here by the Corsairs, however. Natural base for Mighty is dead, though. If you try to one base here against effectively a three basing Soxtree, you're going to have a bad time. So, yeah, good attempt. I mean, DT's on the other side. Got 11 kills on this DT. Soxtree's down to 19 drones, and by 19, I mean 18. And 17. Alright, alright. This one DT is trying to make it interesting for us anyway. As far as base race scenarios are concerned. Hydra's here. No detection, though. Man, just build a spore. Sometimes Zerg players drive me crazy with their refusals to build a spore. 16 kills, and that's it. Mighty taps out. Soxery's left the game. Why is this DT still attacking stuff? Who's still here? 
And there we go. Whoever's running <laughs> Whoever's running the thing, whoever's running the tournament backed out there too. Probably Caster Muse. All right, so game one. Not incredibly cheesy, but I did like the DT making across the map and getting like 17 kills and reducing Soxry down to 14 drones before the Hiders overwhelmed his face and murdered him in his sleep. The storm timing wasn't quite good enough. The DT idea was good, but too many Hiders. Soxry's macro was far too powerful, and that's game one. So, interesting. I think some of the future games are definitely shorter, indicating maybe more cheesy if you're into that sort of thing. Which I think we are. So game one, a bit of a warm up. 21 Protoss buildings died. No Zerg buildings died today. That's insane. And then Soxry outspent. Actually got outspent by the Protoss here. But if you can attack before the 10 minute mark and kill stuff, it doesn't matter as much. So that's game numero uno. Let's move to game number two. Hit that like button if you haven't already. And let's see who's next. Game number two is here on Hitchhiker. It's going to be between Midas and Modify. Motify, Mortify, something like that. Top left, we've got ourselves our blue Protoss. It is Motify. And in the bottom right, we've got a red Terran. It is Midas. 700 APM for Motify. Holy smokes, dude. Serious, serious business there from you. So, pro moving out super early. Feels like this is going to be a proxy pylon of some kind. Is it going to be a cannon rush? I guess we'll have to see. So, yeah, I'm here on Hitchhiker for game numero dos. Always fun to see who comes out on top here, the Cheezer or the Cheesy. We've got side disruptors lining. We've cast a couple games on this map. It is a very weird map. It's very strange. And there it is. There's your forward pylon. No pylons in the main base because this pylon here is providing the additional sign needed to do what you do. So, hmm, pylon into forward, into proxy gate maybe. Dude, proxy gate. I can feel the Artosis Rage already as Zealots start wandering into this mineral line and killing stuff. Midas not walling off, because walling off against Protoss is generally considered not great. And it is a gateway. All right, cool. So proxy gateway here, definitely cheesing it here. In game number two, feeling the cheese coursing through my veins. And here comes the probe. Normal scout timing, says Motify. Please don't notice that there's a gateway outside. In fact, I'm just here to harass you and play this like it's 100% normal. Wait, no, please don't. Oh, thank goodness you didn't go scout. Barracks coming up. All right. I mean, it's way after this gateway is going to be finished, though. Gas, steel. Oh, that's an indication something's going on here. So I think maybe if you're Midas, maybe you go check. Well, it throws up a second barracks and says, okay, gas, steel indicates there's something coming to trying to kill me soon, and that's usually going to be a zealot. So the more Marines I have, the better off I'm going to be here. Maybe a bunker would be pretty hot as well. But yeah, zealot production here at sub two minutes, boys. Sub two minutes, boys and girls. Throwing up, throwing up a supply depot. The probe harass and delay on the construction of these barracks is actually pretty elite from Motify. Holy smokes. So Zealot's here, and just now the first Marine is being produced. So Zealot Bob is ready to cause some havoc. He kills an SC. Oh my gosh, is this it? He's just like, you're never getting that second barracks built. No, he does. He gets the second one built. Oh, Probe dies. That's a little bit annoying. Okay, good positioning on the Marine there. Zealot can't quite get in. He's going to just... I don't know. Why are you... You can't hide. He jukes. Okay, jukes around. Kills an SCV. Another Zealot shows up. I mean, this is micro-challenge of all the live long day right now. So, so frustrating to try to deal with. Zealot down here is fighting solely against SCVs, which is a great thing. This guy got five kills. Five. It's five kills. Man, who are we rooting for here? Marine count is at four. 12 to 14 workers in favor of the Protoss. Another Zealot joins the party. And yeah, this guy's pretty injured. This guy's pretty healthy. Man, has Midas held it? Has Midas shut down this cheeser here today? It seems like maybe he has. Artosis, eat your heart out. Look at this. The Zealots are forced to flee. They're forced to flee from this position. I mean, reinforcing Zealots are here, but like... The okay, that was that was a pathing death right there. Can they hold? No, absolutely not. Look at this. He's not even microing anymore. Dang, Midas. Midas holds it off like an absolute boss. Comes up, says, okay... 
So this is what you have, huh? I'm going to depower your gateway and then A move across the map and I'm going to win. And that's it. Absolutely impressive display here today as the light's reflecting off the helmets of these Marines. Trying to get up additional stuff back home. I don't know if I necessarily want to kill this gateway. If I was him, I'd honestly be booking it across the map, but... Sure, makes you feel better. But, I mean, it's... Boy, this is a lot. This is 32 to 22 supply. 17 of those is workers, so... It is a full... Uh, 8 value of army supply more for the Terran right now, which is a lot at the 4-minute mark. It's not going to go particularly well if you're down that much. If you're down that much when you're maxed out, sure. You'll probably be fine, but at this level, it's such a percentage of your army, and all you have are zealots and no dragoons at all, and no cannons to try to... Oh, shield battery, though. Falling back to a shield battery might do this. Unless, you know, the shield battery gets focused down by marines. Oh, the forward bunker. Turnabout is fair place, as Midas. We're gonna kill your shield battery. Ooh, hang on, hang on. Probes from the top, zealots from the south. Shield battery taking some hits. As long as it has full health, it can provide some. Never mind, the shield battery is dead. Okay, so shield battery completely wasted, I think, 100 minerals there. Maybe he did some healing. I didn't see it. And this is, I like Midas. He's being very cautious here, right? He's just like, you know, we don't have to. And then he stands in and takes hits. Never mind. He's like, we got it. We're going to kill all of your probes, knock you down to 13 total of workers and 20 SCVs. The tides have turned that way. Dragoons are not super good against Marines. It's like, yeah, if you want to abandon your probes to death, sure. You go ahead and do that. Seven probes remaining, and Midas's counterattack is far too strong. And that's two Protoss losses in a row that we've cast to start this off. Brutal. Protoss fans, I can't guarantee you there will be a Protoss win here today, but I feel like there will be. It just, there's got to be something Protoss he wins. So Matify wins, and Midas or leaves the game, and Midas wins it in 6 minutes and 16 seconds. Yeah, that was that was very well done. That first Marine is extremely crucial. If you're trying to deal with something like this, pulling back between the barracks and the supply depot, so the Zealot has to squeeze through a narrow choke. SCV is there to body block as well. Marine getting free hits all the time. And yeah, the Zealot basically had to come down and try to get some SCV kills. Did get some SCV kills for sure, but really just getting chased by Marines the entire time. Marines, it does take a lot of hits for them to kill a Zealot, but it's not infinite. And eventually the zealots will get burned down. So beautiful, beautiful display of hold and counter attack there from Midas. 135 or 13,000 points for him versus 9,000 for the Protoss. 30 to 19 kill death ratio, pretty good. Three to zero buildings raised, and then resources here for more from Midas. It's a sort of cheese game. What do you do? So fantastic display from Midas. We're gonna see more of him later, maybe. Maybe we will. But yeah. Hit the like button, check out that join button down below if you haven't already, join the channel, support it directly if you love this cheese, and we'll be back with more, because of course we will. Next up, we've got Soma versus Zero here on Blue Storm. Bottom left, our Blue Zerg player, it is going to be Soma, and in the top right, we've got Zero. So a ZVZ cheese indicates early pool cheese, right? Yes, I feel like it does. So who's going to go for the early pool? Make your bets now, Soma. Or a zero. Once again, this is Soma. But under his Z J Day name, and in the top right again we have zero. Should be excellent between these two dudes. Nobody's going for like the f four pool or five pool or anything like that. So maybe an earlier one, nevertheless. Here, but we could see some proxy sunkins in this one. Z V Z stuff. Definitely interesting, to say the least. Always, always an interesting thing. Although, I don't know. If you watch a bunch of ZVZ, it does kind of turn samey. But short ZVZs are just intense. They have been characterized as knife fights in a phone booth before. I think that's very fair to say. Like, Ling fights can sometimes just feel like uh, you're going to come out on top. But how did you win that? Or how did you lose that? There's your pool. That is just straight a nine pool here out of Soma. Hmm. What looks like potentially an overpool from Zero, or I mean, hatch first again a ZVZ seems insane. Like I really wouldn't recommend that. But wow, two-player map, two-player map. 
And you're gonna tell me you're hatch firsting. Okay, Zero's feeling his oats. He might just get straight up punished for this, though. I'm not sure what he's thinking with this play, but maybe it's... I'm assuming that someone's gonna go for a hatch first. But yeah, three sets of lings immediately in production here at two minutes on the nose, basically. Overlord coming down. This is why you send your overlord across to see if lings are coming and give yourself some level of advance warning of what is happening here. But dude, Zero's spawning pool is like at 30% complete. Speed's on the way from Soma. This is aggressive play. He's still getting gas, which indicates that he wants maybe to get a lair. He's not just making non-stop links here, but that Overlord sees this. Sees it coming, and Zero's like, ah! Potential build order loss here. Gonna have to fight, making a creep colony before the spawning pool is finished, because you really got to get that going. The natural base can afford to get sacked. That is something right now. I mean, is he gonna bother killing it? Because that does buy time for Zero to sit back in his main base and not have to worry about these links. It's not a lot of time. And there's the cancel. Yeah, that time's over now. Sunken, come on, Sunken, it doesn't take that long to make it. And he's getting a lair? Dude, what? Dude, and he's going lair. What an absolute alpha here. Okay, that's not really a thing. But check him out. He's making a set of lings. Okay, two sets of lings. Soma's got to hang out at the outskirts and be like, oh, that Sunken placement is actually perfect. Dude, look at Zero responding to this just with absolute grace. Yeah, like I said, Lair coming down here from Soma 2. As the Lings jump in, of course. So Lair timing is pretty similar. Obviously, Zero's speed is going to be super behind because just the spawning pool timing is as such. He just keeps donating. He just keeps donating. <gasps> He's throwing up his own creep colony here, though. Oh my gosh, this, if he can get this, holy crap, holy crap, that is forcing Zero to try to engage, he's getting hits off on this creep colony, he's like, hey man, if you want to try to kill the creep, I'm going to get shots off on your, this is insanity right now, if he gets, the, he gets it up, he gets the sunken up, and that means this sunken's not happening, it forces Zero's hand, oh dude, that sunken taking hits, it's gonna come up, but it's also absolutely dead. Drones are trying to fight, Lings are trying to fight. This Sunken is absolutely winning the game. It's getting big time hits off on, who's going after this egg now, which I mean, sure, it's okay. I mean, maybe killing the lair would be better, but <laughs> can he get that? Oh my gosh, he got it. That was insane. That was only two Lings, but still. Dude, that's your GG and zero taps out. Zoma is your winner in 4 minutes and 57 seconds. Insane cheese. That was great. I thought Soma was dead. I was like, oh boy. I mean, your worker count isn't super hot. Is he making a spire back here? He was making a spire back home too. But guess what? So is Zero. Because if you don't have a spire and your enemy shows up with a spire, you die. You just show up, you're dead. But then he brings a drone. I didn't even see this drone. Me watching the mini-map. But yeah, didn't even see this drone coming up. This is the MVP sunken colony of the game, without a doubt. Sure, the Ling's got some kills, too. I really wish it tracked static defense kills in this interface, because that would be awesome. But it's five kills, or Ling. I'm sure this has at least five kills. Oh, man. Yeah, so you tuck away your own sunken, so the Ling's can't get in here easily without taking hits from, like, drones and Ling's and stuff. But then that leaves this whole side open to a sunken coming up from your enemy. And then you gotta just tap out. You just gotta be done. Beautiful. Beautiful play there from Soma getting that win. Ends up killing 25 to 15 worker or units total, which is fantastic. And that sunken had a lot to do with it for sure. Resources just too close to count. So <laughs> really good ZVZ. I mean, oh. Ah, oh, such a good ZVZ. Alright, that was mm, magnifique. Magnifique. Yeah, if you want to support the channel, you can also support me at patreon.com slash falconpaladin for as little as a dollar a month. Gives you access to see videos that I post out there a month before they show up on the YouTube channel, so that's cool. All right, more cheese. Are you kidding? We have more of this? Absolutely yes. All right, we are back. 
on Hitchhiker. It's going to be uh, Sack versus Mighty here. Top left, we've got our Red Terran player. It is Sack. And in the bottom right, we have Mighty. Blue Protoss, he back. All right, man. So who's the cheeser in this match? What's great about cheese is you just sprinkle it in to a best of five. You're playing against somebody in something like Castor Muse Star League and... You get a couple wins with it, right? Because it's just it it's kind of hard to scout for cheese perfectly every time and it hurts your economy to do so and so it just it works. It just works. Hmm. But yeah, quick plug for Castor Muse too. Check him out. I'll put a link to his YouTube channel in the description if you want to watch Castor Muse stuff cuz I'm sure you do. He just puts together his own tournaments, a really, really strong, strong supporter of the Brood War scene in the year 2022, which is, you know, just a mere 24 years after the game was released. No big deal. Yeah, I mean, you still love it. I still love it. What is eternal about this game? There's a lot of things we could talk about, but just the simplicity of the concepts here, the RTS, just, hmm. All pieces working together in a way that just flows. The visuals are great. The remaster didn't screw things up, which we can't say for things like Warcraft 3. Are you proxying up here? Where? Mighty, what are you doing? Is he going to throw up a Nexus here? That'd be hilarious. What? What? Why are you staring at a power generator? What is happening? <laughs> okay, fair enough, I guess. What the heck is going on here? <laughs> um, everything's fine, nothing is ruined. I don't know what this probe's trying to do. I mean, traditionally, you don't send a probe out unless you're ready to have it do something when it arrives. So, hmm. Okey doke. I mean, might notice a probe is missing if you want to count the probes here, Sack. Toss Forky. Alternate ID here. But yeah, there's nothing crazy going on, right? Cybercore, sure. Singularity charge, absolutely. Understandable. Have a great day. Factory coming up to deal with it, and then, okay, okay, you're on the move. You're on the move, and the groove. Pylon! Really can't do anything up here without first throwing down a pylon, sir. Wow. Okay, okay finally. I had to give up, and then the pylon comes up. So what do we think this is? Proxy gate? DTs? I kind of like the idea of a proxy gate with DTs, but... Citadel's gonna have to happen here. What are you doing? Sack's kind of similarly hanging out in this area too. I guess maybe you're just checking to see if units are busting through the power generators. Ah yes, no one's broken through yet. That's excellent news. There's nothing, I don't have to worry about that attack path. Right? Ooh, yeah, double proxy gate. Love and that. Is this just regular proxy gate dragoon shenanigans? Entirely possible. This dragoon's hunting that SCV that we saw earlier, and there it is. Trying to hide in a corner, eh? Three. Four. Five. And six. Six is your death sentence, SCV. Surprised he's not running right. Hmm. Whatever, barracks scouting out this way because you don't need a barracks because obviously you're making mech units, spider mines in fact, to open this thing up. Dragoon versus Vulture is not in the Vulture's best interest to have this fight, in fact, has to retreat from whence he came. Dragoon trying to get some free shots off, and by free, I mean taking a ton of shield damage. But back home... Yeah, man. It's just basically proxy Dragoons. This is what this... Oh, the barracks is blocking it, though! Dude, sick plays! I don't think this proxy is going to work out all that well for Mighty. I'm looking at it. 
I'm staring at this barracks and I'm saying, oh. This has happened to Sack before. <laughs> Sack has 100%. Had Dragoon show up out of nowhere at the top of his base and he's been murdered by it. So he throws down a barracks, blocks off Dragoon attempts to get in here. What is it? 40 to 37 supply in favor of a mighty. Ooh, the drop ship. Okay, some. Oh, no. Are all of your dragoons in a position? Oh, my gosh. All of his dragoons are here. Barracks. <laughs> Getting that great scouting information for sure. Spider mines. Lay them down. Lamp, send the vultures in. Go, go, go. Is there anything to stop this? There's two dragoons to stop this. Dragoons have. They're taking spider mine. That's one. Dragoon dies. Oh, getting rid of... Fighting real hard. Spider... Oh my gosh, they're microing on both locations here. Oh, using spider mines to deny the mining here as well as he can. This is insane. Dragoon just kind of free running in the Terran base. Vulture's a bit of free running. Okay, not as free running actually. In the Protoss base, after all, SCD count not doing super hot. By that I mean he's got an advantage, but it's not going to be an advantage for long here as, yeah. He's down to 20 SCVs from 27. The probes are actually working here, and I think Mighty has done this against Sack. You tried to throw up a barracks to shut me down? Well, I'll show you. And by that I mean I'm going to kill all of your SCVs. SCVs are pretty good fighters. As you did see a Dragoon go down there. They're really pretty good against Dragoons in general. God, that tank does not stand a chance at all, and that is your GG. Bam! Sack taps right on out. Mighty is your winner. The Proxy Gate Dragoon play defeats the attempt of the Vulture Drop Saruni with the Spider Mine research first. The Spider Mines did not do as much as they needed to on either side of the map here, honestly. So, beautiful job. Sometimes Dragoons... All you need with that proxy player, right? 14,000 points here for Toss Girl. I mean, Sack. It's not Toss Girl. It's Toss for G. Sack. 17,000 from Mighty. Dude, 40 to 9? Are you kidding me? 40 to 9 kill death ratio in 7 minutes is crazy good. Super, super good. I don't know what to tell you. That's amazing. And then structures 1 0. Fine. Outspent sack by about, I don't know, 600, 700 resources. Not a huge deal. So, fantastic. Nice little PVT there. But junk. And that's going to be it for that match. So, we've got more. Absolutely got more. So, let's see what's going to happen next on the channel. I mean, you're here for cheese. So, I mean, it's going to be more cheese. What else are you expecting? Next up, we've got Sharp versus Sack here on Neo Electric. Top right, we're going to have ourselves a Blue Terran. It is Sack under his real name. And in the bottom left, we have Sharp. So two excellent Terran players here battling it out for you. This is from the quarterfinal of Castor Muse Star League Season 3. Again, check him out. Link in the description to his YouTube channel. And Terran Chi is usually consists of proxy racks. Maybe a proxy factory. Or maybe a proxy reef. We'll have to see what's going on here. Do, 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 do. You there. I'm looking at you. Because you're suspicious. You're moving out. Not really stopping at any point to build a barracks. So I feel like you're planning on doing that somewhere else. Sharp. Maybe the guy. 800 APM for sharp. Good grief. Sack running at a full 470, which feels like a lot until you realize that Sharp's at 800. But barracks here, kind of splitting the difference here. This is a big four-player map, so you can't just throw a barracks up outside your base, your enemy's main base, because you don't know where it is. You don't really have time to scout it. So this is splitting the difference of all three potential locations that he could be. And then just, you know, barracks there so slows down the marine rush time here as your supply depot comes out back home too. So let's see what Sack is up to on the other hand. His SCV is staying at home much less suspiciously and building his own barracks in a position inside of his main base. It's a huge main base. 
nevertheless. But he's building it not in a more advantageous position dedicated to rushing. Oh, I thought maybe we wouldn't see gas here, but you know, we got some gas. See if this gets scattered out. Sack, will he find the enemy base? The harassment here is actually not bad. Is okay, barracks finishes actually no problem, no big deal. It's all good. Marines moving out with an SCV. Dude, you throwing up a bunker would be pretty hot. You're gonna try to do it. The thing about throwing up a bunker is you kind of have to do it in vision of the enemy in this location, so What are you doing up here? This is so weird. I like it. It's very, very weird, but I like it a lot. And then just making a factory back home. So some early pressure here from Sharp, but it's not an all-in. Like, he by no means is throwing everything into this, right? But maybe he just kind of wins with it anyway. Okay, so there's your bunker. Fine. Again, it's not really in range to kill anything. Three Marines have showed up. You only got one Marine of your own. Oh no, Sack. Did he fail to prepare? Did he prepare to fail? Marine down, SCV's good micro actually on display here from Sack. Bunker finishes. No, two Marines die. Ugh, but two of them make it into the bunker. Okay, they get some beautiful hits off, killing an SCV on the retreat there. On the let's go, losing those two Marines hurts. That was really good for Sack that he was able to pull that off. SCV's coming in to go maybe kill some of the more wounded work oh my gosh he just kind of walked right in there huh maybe actually attack i don't know what was that he walked up into the mineral line and then was like never mind we're out oh building a proxy starport look at this maybe sack doing some proxy race shenanigans while he's being contained i kind of love that idea he doing with his own factory vultures okay so yeah one's cruising out across the map here it's gonna be vulture versus vulture battles sack <laughs> trying to position the barracks directly over the bunker maybe so it can't be repaired so it can't be selected if you can't see it perfectly hmm maybe that's what he's working on here And it is a wraith. I mean, what else are you gonna do over here? You can't wait to make a battle cruiser. A drop ship would not be bad either, but Wraith is awesome. There's no anti-air down here at all for Sharp. Is he just gonna get <laughs> It is gonna be proxy wraith. I said that, and I was like, that's ridiculous. It's not gonna be proxy wraith, and then it totally was. Siege tank out says, I hereby defeat your vulture immediately and forever. Maybe don't walk your tank up into range. There you go. There you go. Tank out of range of the bunker. Smart. Smart, smart stuff. Sharp's going for spider mines. He's working his own vultures. Where is my wraith is at? Here it is. It's our wraith. Wraith awaiting launch orders. Oh, man. Okay, so you have no anti-air. Enjoy this experience. I've had this happen to me before as a Zerg player. It's easier for you to not have anti-air when you're a Zerg player, though. <laughs> I mean, does it take... Eight hits for a Wraith to kill an SCV? Yeah, certainly does. Trying to get an armory up so we can make a Goliath. That'd be huge. Also, everything died here. There's a barracks floating around, but Sharp's in a lot of trouble all of a sudden. Like, a lot of trouble. We need to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh my gosh, it's eight hits. Wraith ground attack is so embarrassing. Like, I get they didn't want it to be as good as the air-to-air -air attack, but sheesh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hurry, Goliath. Hurry, Goliath. The Wraiths are eating us. 29 to 22 workers. Sharp here is hurting economically, but does have a second base up, which is nice. But then Siege Tanks are like, yo. Oh, man. His natural base. That economic advantage. Disadvantage is getting worse. I think that's your GG. I think the Wraith Siege Tank battle 
is going to sack here. I mean, Goliath tanks take care of that easily. Wraiths are alive, if not happy about it. Trying to spider mine the tanks like you would a Dragoon. Oh, SCVs giving their lives to destroy a siege tank. But Sharp is done, man. It's 32 to 18 total workers. This is brutal. Wow, good match. Really, really dumb TVT. You know, sometimes the dumbest matches are the most fun. He, he did. He landed up here, he's been building Marines. Not getting a lot done with it, obviously. Wait, did they leave? The race bailed. Where did that siege tank go? Oh, must have gotten murdered by something here. You, nope, Goliath doesn't have credit for that at all. Hmm. Yeah, man, so 38 to 24 total workers. It is a full two base here from Sack Sharp. Kind of not doing too bad on a second base, I guess. We're building additional factories here. This is nuts. Oh, he's getting cloak. Sack is getting the cloak upgrade. Vulture speed here from Sharp 2. This hero Wraith. Two kills. This one has nine. He's like, repair me. I have nine kills. No, you'll still have 100 HP. You'll be fine. You don't need extra repairing. I, I don't know that I can agree with that, says the Wraith pilot. But whatever. You do what you need to do. Yeah, Goliath's a pretty good answer here. I mean, at least until Siege Mode is out for Siege Tanks, which doesn't seem to be on the menu for Sack at this point. He's go he got cloaked on. Oh my gosh, this cloak is done. And there it is! <laughs> and Sharp's like, oh. Oh. Com sad station. Build com sad station instantly. 44 to 23 SC. He's not even running the SCVs. He's just like, this hurts. This hurts a lot. It's not enough for it to one shot an SCV, but I think two? Two shot? One. Two volley. Yeah, so there's your scan. Two shot, two shot. Dude, sharp. Sharp. Friendo, Babendo, sharp. 19 SCVs at nine minutes. He just comes back around here. Loses a wraith in the process. Not Can't quite two shot these guys anymore. More of a three shot with our group of three SCVs here. Fine. Third base coming in. Sharp doesn't want to tap. Sharp's like, I got this. I'll be fine. I'm down 32 total supply. Sack here who's playing extremely well and kind of eating my lunch. But I've got Goliaths and um spider mines and stuff. Okay, a couple SCVs go down. These vultures are trapped in here and very dead now. 78 to 46 supply. Pushing up. Ow! Oh, and then Sharp leaves the game. That wasn't even after a battle, Sharp. The heck, man. All right, well done. That was funny. That was an absolutely very, very fun TVT. Got some Cloak Wraith play. I don't see that ever on the channel. So always good to get that. 53 to 13 units killed in favor of Sack is nuts. And then just <laughs> 12,000 to 7,000 resources in 10 minutes is a massive disadvantage for Sharp there. Brutal stuff. Sack's just good. Sack is excellent. An excellent Terran player, as we saw him take down the more established Sharp. Amazing. All right, cool, cool, cool stuff. We've got a couple more replays to go here, so don't go anywhere. Hit that like button if you haven't, and more cheese in your future. We're back on Hitchhiker. It's going to be Sack versus Modesty here. Apparently a very cheesy map, Hitchhiker. Top left, it's going to be Sack, our red Terran player. And in the bottom right, Modesty, who is our blue Zerg player. So ZVT cheese. Have we had any of that today yet? Some ZVZ, some TVT, some PVT, some PVZ. Did I ever say that one? I don't know. A lot of matchups in this game, that's for sure. Okay, so who's going to be the one to try to cheese this thing? Bunker Rush, pretty good from the Terran. An early pool pressure. A little Ling Flood action attempt. From Modesty would be pretty awesome here as well. But as it stands, and we start getting more and more drones, and up to 9 supply, it's like, alright. So nothing too insanely fast, anyway. Ooh. 
Alright, fine. No proxy barracks, no early pool shenanigans here. It's at least an overpool. If not a hatch first here from Modesty. Barracks coming up at home. What is the play? Could be Wraith Rush. That is something you can do to a Zerg player who doesn't make Hydras. He refuses to make spores, but that's like all Zerg players, right? It's pretty much all Zerg players, if you ask me. And there's your hatch of Rooney. Alright. So hatch first in. What's again? What is this? Like, what is the entire purpose of sending an SCV down here? Like, I guess maybe if it was a pool first play for modesty, you'd have Lings chomping away at these power structures, and maybe you'd see what's happening. Or maybe you're just hiding your own tech up here. Wait, can you just walk through this? What am I missing here? So maybe just workers can do... No. <laughs> Factory here. I like it. Factory here. Starport here. Make some vultures. Lift them on in. Front door defended. Main base not defended because you're not worried about getting dropped necessarily. Okay, I'm liking it. That was a long way for that SUV to travel, but totally, totally worth. 100% worth. Metabolic boost on the way here from our two base things. He's got all of 12 drones now, which is fairly normal stuff. Making... Okay, wow. Is he even making eight lings, really? Yeah, man. And making eight lings. So this is a little bit more than defensive Zergling stuff. I think this is a move across the map and try to kill stuff's play. Uh-oh. Is Sack getting build order mur murdered here? Or this. Or this. Oh, it's so good. Look at this, though. Overlord Scout. 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 Seize it. Seize it. Ah, oh, this is nuts. All right. Ling's coming in. SCVs. Body block. Marines, do your darndest. Take him down. That's right. Take him down. And then this thing, the drone blocks the landing zone of the factory. There's lings here too. Oh, oh the game sense from Modesty to scout that out is nuts. I mean, I don't know. That. Oh, hang on. Oh my gosh. What? You stopped blocking the ramp with your bodies, SCVs. I knew you couldn't stay there forever, but dude, did Sack just get wrecked? I think Sack Mike just got wrecked, y'all. Oh, look, he's trying to... He did manage to land the factory. He's going to get a vulture out. That's nice. But his SCV count's having a really rough time. His marine count is zero in the main base. SCV's nine. Oh, wow. Actually cleaned that up very quickly when it got right down to it. Vulture with perfect micro never has to take any damage from these things, from these zerglings at all. But speed is done. And it gets harder. But my gosh, the insane micro with slow vulture okay he's taking way too many hits now but oh, five kill vulture another one pops out this is crazy how did he get that down i thought modesty was tracking that factory perfectly so sunken gonna cover at least the gas didn't come more than anything else which is pretty important stuff but it's five scvs oh morling showed up ah. okay so sack is dead i cannot see the blue on that mini map at all can ya Look at that. Can you tell there's something happening up here? No. Why is the blue not showing up whatsoever? It's like they get absorbed by the building when they're just chomping on the buildings. They're just part of the building there. Whatever. Whatevs. Oh, a Wraith did show up, though. What is going on? Ah! This is the cheesiest game yet all of a sudden. Vultures. Trying to kill as many of these speedlings as they vulturally can. And the Wraith is completely unopposed. And there's nothing happening over here for Sack. And oh my gosh. Make us. Okay. Making Mutas. Beautiful. Mutas should be able to seal the deal here 
for modesty and win him the game. Especially with a pair of Scourge. Especially with a pair of Scourge to deal with this Wraith. Okay, so Drone's running for it. Because the Mutas aren't going to pop in time. And Sack just taps out. Sack's like, ah, you have a Spire. I am destroyed. And GG, man. That was fantastic. That was some really beautiful cheese. Just mm, two thumbs up. Delicious, delicious cheese. Good choice there from Nibbler for sure. Yeah, Wraith's got six kills. I <laughs> It's a three kill vulture cruising around. Where's his buddy? Oh, here they are. Zero kills, four kills on that one. I mean, eight drones on the field. You win a game where there's eight drones on the field. You've got a wraith murdering drones in the main. You've got vultures chasing everybody out from the natural, and you win the game. Incredible. Absolutely sick stuff. Yeah, Ling Rush kind of countered the little factory drop play, which was awesome. Where on earth was a starport, though? Was it just, did he build that in the main? He must have built that in the main. Hang on, I need to see where that was. <laughs> did he kill it? Must have killed it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Here it was. <laughs> That was fun. That was really, really fun. Karen did his darndest to cheese his way into a victorious situation. But it turns out Zerglings are good. And I mean, teching into Mutas also really saved Modesty's butt here. Because if this Spire doesn't exist, I really think Sat keeps playing it. But he's like, well, my floating buildings can't be protected from Mutas, so that's rough. And that was pretty much the beginning of the end. If not the end, and it was the end because he tapped out. Wow. So units killed 26 to 30. The closest one we've had today, I think. Tight, 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 tight finish. Just more resources for modesty by a significant amount. So, cool. More cheese. What's that you want more? We shall give you more. Stick right with it. We're here on Escalade for Noob versus Piano. Top right, it's going to be our Red Protoss. It's going to be Noob. And in the bottom right, it's going to be Piano, our Blue Terran player. So another PBT, this time on Escalade. Let's go ahead and check out the map in case you're unfamiliar with it. Got a little bit of a middle base here. Again, hard to take, hard to hold. And it's a four-player map. We've got expansions with two ramps going in and out at the three o'clock and the nine o'clock positions and other than that there are not very many places to expand if this was a 2v2 then resources would be very very tight but this is going to be cheese so resources will not be tight <laughs> all right so who is the cheeser here quick plug for the falcon paladin store just falcon paladin dot store We've got some new additions. If you're in the Discord server and familiar with the term Sooked, then there's a shirt for you. If you're not sure what Sooked is, then maybe join the Discord server. Anyway, if you like hats, shirts, mugs, winter hats, hoodies, go ahead and check out falconpaladin.store. We'll ship to anywhere in the world other than, I think, North Korea? Anyway, and you can buy stuff in your own currency. What else do you want? And you get a discount if you use the code BROODWAR at checkout. Hey, hey, hey. So go ahead and check out falconpal.store, code word BROODWAR. For a discount to Rooney. All right, man. So Nexus first here from Noob. Barracks first at the top of the ramp. Here from Piano. And SCV checking out, see what's going on on the other side of the map here. Is scouting correctly as to where his opponent is? Are you cross-spawn scouting? Yeah, I mean, what this does is checks to see if there are barracks in the middle of the map, too. So, that's fine. Kind of a two-for-one. Check the bottom left to check for proxies in the middle of this four-player location. Which would make sense. If the Terran was going for the proxy barracks, that would be something that they could do. So, ah ha, ha So, this is where Piano's like, alright. So, this is a Nexus first. We can punish the crap out of this. Gonna th honestly throwing up a bunker right here. Oh, okay, or back here is fine too. 
Bunker there, Marine, SCV, heading across, Marine in production. This is very, very tight timing, but if you can get the Marines running across the map as fast as they can, or at least marching across the map, it's kind of like a speed walk, what they're doing here, right? They're not necessarily moving their arms all that much, it's more just kind of a speed walk, speed walk, speed walk kind of a thing. Pro comes in and sees what's what, and says, oh, okay, interesting, so we're going to repair up. I don't really? Go back and finish that thing. Why are you hanging out? Go! All right, go. Yeah, that's going to be... That's a completed bunker. It's not in range to hit the Nexus, though, which I find very, very interesting. <laughs> we brought our big brother Marine here to shut you down. Get out of here. Get on out of here. And maybe a second bunker coming up here, maybe? Oh, man. I mean, one Marine against these probes is going to have a fairly hard time. But if the SCV is body blocking, there we go. There's the second bunker. So two Marines are twice as good as one Marine here. Trying to kill the SCV, building that second bunker. It'd be a big, big, big play here. One Marine does die. And a Zealot's coming in to SCV. Needs to get in there and finish. Needs to finish that second bunker. No way. Is Noob going to be able to handle this? I don't see a situation in which Noob can handle this. Ah! Kills the SCV, but the bunker is up and the bunker is firing on the Nexus. And the Nexus is probably just going to die here. I really don't see a result wherein this Nexus is allowed to stay up. We've seen Idra do this in TVPs to completely punish the Nexus first play. As Terran, you throw up a bunker, you get Marines in it, and there's really not a lot that can happen here. Right? Going to make Zealot, 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 Zealot not working on Dragoons at the moment. Marines are getting some extra hits off on these Zealots. <laughs> Dude, got four Marines, two continuing to fire on the Nexus. The others are going after probes. Oh, yeah. I mean, this Nexus. We're moving into hull damage here. I mean, how many... How many Zealots do you need? There's... Okay, he's going to try to bust it now. Here we go. So, Zealots getting on top of that thing. SCV is trying to repair. They're doing very good at it. Are we focusing? Not really focusing anything down. You can't with the bunker. You just hope that you're killing the Zealots. And I think that's a hold... Sell it down, sell it down. That's it, baby. That's a dead Nexus. That is a beautiful denial of Nexus first. This is the risk that you bring upon yourself when you go Nexus first in a PVT. If it gets scouted, even if it doesn't get scouted very fast, this bunker shows up in the, in, uh, the hands of a skilled Terran player. You're just going to lose that Nexus. Fare thee well. Goodbye. Goodbye. Second base is up. It's 25 to 15 workers right now. A two-basing Terran versus a one-basing... And people ask sometimes, is Bio-Viable versus Protoss? And yeah, it is. As long as you do this stuff before Storm gets out and before Reavers get out. Marines are great against Dragoons and pretty good against Zealots. And you can really get a lot of damage done if you can show up before the further attack happens. I mean, this is just GG. That's it. Probe count plummeting precipitously, as I do like to say. Marines are dying here, and Piano just doesn't care, and ban... Noob taps out, and Piano is our winner in 5 minutes and 45 seconds. Okay, 44 seconds, but dang! That was so good! That was such a good play. Really, 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 really good play there. Great reaction. Responded, saw what was happening, and responded immediately. And just overall, that is exactly what you want to do, Terran players. If your Protoss opponent is cheeky enough to go for that Nexus first against you on a four-player map, it's a little bit safer, but got scouted instantly, responded to instantly, and that was that. Yeah, factories coming up behind it. Two fac. Yeah, two factories coming up behind it, just in case something really terribly wrong went happened here, but that was not going to happen for Piano at all. Beautiful. That was mm, magnifique. Excellent cheese. Excellent for sure. 8,000 points here for new 12,000 for Piano. A 27 to 11 kill death ratio. As the winner in a cheese game usually is going to have a good number there. So we've got two more to go. So hit that like button if you haven't already. And we've got... Let's go with a TVT next. It's going to be Neo Aztec for this TVT. Featuring Sari versus Piano. Left side, our Red Terran Piano. And on the right side, it's going to be Sari. So Red versus Blue here on Neo Aztec. Not the old Aztec, the new Aztec. It's a three-player map. It's got a nice little kind of spiral design here in the middle if you zoom out very, very far, which you couldn't do before the remastered client and in the replay interface. But man, there are a lot of games that I have replays for on this map. PVZs, but this is only a... This is a TVT. 
Maybe the only one that I have, but I haven't looked through every single replay, so that is probably untrue. So, starting out, you've got your low ground base, which is a feature of maps from StarCraft back in 1998 and 99 and 2000 and 2001, the early days, the early years of StarCraft, and then you go up to your natural base. Kind of weird to wall off, but it's a TVT. So walling off is not recommended because marines and tanks don't care about walls. Hmm. All right. So barracks in the middle of the map, as I suggested was possible in the last map. Let's see if this SCV finds it. Let's do this. Let's do this for fun. So again, this is why you would cross spawn scout. You'll find something in the middle. But you'll also scout scout a potential location. And got it. Totally sees it. Oh my gosh, sorry. You absolute absolute god. I mean, not really. Just scouted this out. Gonna I mean, can he prevent this from finishing? Oh my gosh. Um, can I select all of this stuff? No. Ah, uh, so annoying. Oh, he got it. Are you kidding me? Just barely finished that barracks before he died. Oh, that was insane. All right, so now a Marine is going to come out, and another SCV is here just in case that barracks didn't finish, but guess what it did? So now the SCV is going to fight, and back home it's like, well, I better get my barracks done. Dun, 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 dun. Maybe throw up a bunker at the front here as soon as possible to do so with enough resources, because here comes the pain train. Again, good thing that it was scouted. That's the whole play here, is that it was scouted. SCBs are here to fight. Bunch of them. Barracks not done yet. Very close to being done. But yeah, got to pull SCVs off the line. One Marine, not going to fight very well here, but two Marines with an SCV buffering, not going to be too bad. So pushes the enemy back, buys himself some time to th try to throw down a bunker, get his own Marine out. He's going to be down on Marine count, but a bunker is a great equalizer. And once your bunker is up, you can fall back to that, and your enemy Marines are going to have a really hard time dealing with it, even if you're outnumbered three to one, right? So this bunker is going to finish. Get up here, Marine. Go, 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 soldier. Uh, no. no. He delayed and the SCV killed him. Are you kidding me? This one SCV killed him. What is happening? Marines firing away. Another Marine. Get inside. Get in the chopper. Okay. He gets in there. Then just runs right on by. Sits here on this ramp. There's two Marines inside the base wreaking all sorts of havoc. That guy, okay, that guy kills one Marine. Okay, second one dies. That Marine dies for it, too. Whew. This is so intense right now for Sorry, but I think he's done it. I think he's okay. He held off. There's an SCV harassing him a bit, but that's not really a problem. And then Sorry on the other end is proxying a factory, because of course he is. This is where the SCV's got to be like, where's your factory? Where's your second barracks? Why don't you have any of that stuff yet? On the other side, factory's already done for organ, or for piano, who organ, right, that's the jokes. So he should be able to hold off, I mean, is he away from home though, right? He can hold off vulture attacks if he's here, but if the vulture is not here, it can't do a very good job of defending the base. Barracks scouting and is like, okay, where's your second barracks? Where's your factory? You have gas, so it's probably a factory, and bam! Hey, turnabout is fair play, and sorry, taps out. <laughs> Both players end up getting their proxies scouted really quickly. And both players... Oh, both players... I mean, okay. Initially, yes. Piano was able to get some marine pressure even though he got scouted. But no. Not sorry. That was not happening. Vulture scouts this location. That's what the barracks scout was so important for. Where's your factory? Where's your second barracks? Ah, uh, you probably are proxying me. I'm going to send the Vulture out to try to find it. Finds it, kills the SCV building, the factory. There's not a second one around. It doesn't matter if there's a second one around. This Vulture is going to murder them anyway. And ka -chow. Sorry, he's just like, I'm out. I'm done. That totally sucks. That was amazing. Some really, really good cheese towards the end here. This has been great. It's getting better as it goes along, I think. 7 to 5 kill death ratio, whatever. I mean, piano's the winner there. And more resources mined, more overall spent by about 200 in a four minute game is kind of a big deal. All right, final match. We have a ZVP coming in for our cheese, number seven. Should be a good one. Again, super, super special shout out to Nibbler for going through all the replays I threw at him and finding the best ones for us. Leave a comment saying thanks, Nibbler. Or come to the Sunday stream and say thanks, Nibbler. He's usually there.
Last cheese next. We've got Hiva versus Mighty here on Match Point, another ZVP on this map. Bottom left going to be Hiva, who is a Korean player who got his name from a Finnish gum commercial. And in the top right, we've got ourselves a red Protoss. It is Mighty. And this is a very early probe. Maybe it's going to be a Cannon Rush. I haven't seen a Cannon Rush in this cheese comp. But maybe this is a Cannon Rush. Not had much going back on at home. So we're going to go ahead and throw down a pylon. Maybe just blocking the hatchery. Sneaking. Oh, we're sneaking. We are sneaking. Uh, there's a lot of wide open space here. And we're going to throw down a pylon in the bottom right section of Hiva's base. Woo! All right. This should be interesting. I'm already intrigued. And that is a pool. Is that an overpool? No, nah, it's a nine pool coming up. So, I mean, ugh. Zerg player at least has something of a chance to be able to deal with this. He has to know what's happening, though, is the larger problem, right? Which, uh... <laughs> definitely does not. And there... Oh, proxy gate. Oh, this hurts. This really, really hurts. So now the question comes down to how many lings are you going to make, right? With your pool, you're going to make two sets. You're going to make three sets. And really, you're probably going to run across the map and try to kill probes. Try to get some harassment done if you went for a nine pool rather than an over pool or a hatch first. Oh boy, if these lings pop and just start running, I think these zealots get in here, kill a ton of drones, and then Hiva's in a tough position where he needs to try to come back, but does he want to? Can he beat this many probes if they're all fighting him? Oh, this is such a tough position for Hiva. Yeah, Haiba apparently means good in Finnish, and there was a Korean gum commercial that used that word in the Finnish language, and that's where he got his name. So it is six slings, but once again, they're making a beeline elsewhere, and I love the second probe coming in, so he's like, oh yeah, I'm scouting you at the normal time, Ob obviously. Look at me. Oh no, you're ling rushing me. Oh no, what am I going to do? And I already have a plan, actually. So one zealot's out. He's throwing up another pylon back here so it doesn't get depowered by lings if the lings decide to do something. This probe's like, hey, kill me. Kill me. He's like trying to drag them away. Oh, this is going to get interesting now. Yeah, Mighty's going to have six lings in his mineral line. But again, probes are pretty good fighters. And there are 11. There's 11 probes here. So the zealots show up. And this is where Hyva's like, wait, what? What is happening? Dude, killing the spawning pool is not guaranteed damage. But it is huge damage nevertheless. Oh my god, he's dying. 50%, 40%. There's no saving it. These lanes are coming back. It's two Zerglings. And now these guys are in here fighting. The probes are trying to do their best. And a lot of probes. A lot of probes are... Wow, that went very well for Hiva. And all of a sudden, the economy for Mighty is in the toilet. He's at four probes. There's only nine drones, but that feels like amazing amounts. And those Sunkins are up. Those Sunkins got produced while the spawning pool was dying. And another spawning pool is coming up. Protected by the sunken he's like we gotta get in here we gotta jump on top of these sunkens we have enough zealots to do it probes are fighting my gosh there are too many zealots dying here oh, the hold Hiva gets the hold oh my gosh what a disgustingly great great hold there from Hiva I'm utterly impressed. If I have that many zealots show up in my base, I'm just a dead person. I'm probably not doing as well with my lings on the other side of the map. These guys were heroes. None of them died. Two kills, one kill, one kill, two kills, three kills. Completely shuts down the economy of Mighty. When did he... I need to know when he started up those sunken. Well, before now... This is a very short replay. Wow. Okay. So, okay, so yeah, the Zealots start attacking it. And then, oh, immediately creep colonies. Okay, awesome. See, this is why maybe you don't go for the spawning pool. Maybe you come up and try to kill some drones. You see the creep colonies are coming up and you kill those instead. Because I think they're a bigger problem than the spawning pool is. And yeah, he's able to morph them both into sunkens before the spawning pool dies, which is really important. 
And then there's the drone. They're buying time for the Sunkins to finish. And the Lings have completely... Wow, they've completely shut everything down up there. Wow. And then there's just no income for Mighty anymore. He's trying to bring some probes down to fight. And then he tries to fight the Evolution Chamber, and then he goes for it here. But once again, Sunkins just MVPs of this match. Hiva gets the win against the Proxy Zealot Chief. <laughs> completely holds it. Beautiful. God, that Zealot doesn't even get a hit off either. Nicely done. I gotta say, I've never seen Hiva before, so I was a little bit worried about his capabilities and what he'd be able to do, but pff, he immediately responded perfectly. He brought the drones in to defend as much as he needed to, and he called it good and got the victory. So, bam. Wonderful, wunderbar stuff there. 355 on that replay, 6,000 to 3,000 points. A 14 to 3 kill death ratio is amazing for a Zerg player who gets proxy to Rexed. That's a crazy good kill death ratio. That's almost impossible, I feel like. And then more resources here for the Zerg player, but only because obviously the Protoss was out for a while. So, GG! That last one was really fun. Some really, really good cheese in this edition of the Falcon Paladin Professional Brood War Cheese Compilation number 7. And that's going to be it for me today. So, this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of Starcraft Brood War Remastered and a cheese compilation. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.